What's up guys? I greet you all in the name of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. I hope you guys are keeping well and um, living every day for Jesus uh, because he's coming soon to take his bride. Um, and also giving thanks. You know, the Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, it says, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And the writer is speaking to the believers or to um, the Jesus followers. And if there was ever a time that was needful, it's now. Because of everything that's been happening and everything that's happening um, with the COVID-19 crisis, you know, companies shutting down people losing their jobs, um, you know, people are struggling to pay their rent, people can barely afford to put a meal on the table, um, the government is barely keeping up with the pressure, you know, the economy is, 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 is being hit very hard, um, the social distancing rule, which many of us are finding difficult to observe, because as a country we have a strong culture of shaking hands and hugging and gathering together you know and just having an amazing time um, and then you have um, the curfew and if you're found outside past 7 p.m. you encounter the wrath of the police I actually witnessed them um, harass people at 5.55. I saw it with my own two eyes, which was very disturbing. You know, it's like they were waiting the whole day just to be unleashed. Um, you know, so life as we know it to be has changed. Um, it's like the world that we've known has been turned upside down and we don't know whether things will ever go back to the way they were no one knows how long this is going to continue for and there's a lot of fear there's a lot of um, you know fear of a potential financial struggle fear of getting the disease and dying fear of the unknown no one knows what's going to happen next. There's a lot of anxiety, worry, uncertainty, stress. Um, you know, that's also being propagated by the mainstream media and the internet and um, our social platforms. But I believe there are many good things that God is doing through the COVID-19 crisis. You might not agree with me, um, and I know that's a weird statement, but it's true. Um, and one of those things is people are beginning to seek God. People are beginning to acknowledge God. People are getting born again. Um, I had two people call me and tell me they want to give their life to the Lord actually three and two more um, called me and told me they, they they wanted to reconnect back to God and they wanted to work out their relationship with God and so God is doing an amazing thing um, you know I believe sometimes God puts us in various scenarios so that we can learn to listen to his voice and that's exactly what he's doing now he's using times of calamity and adversity to teach us how to wait on him now we all know that god speaks uh, primarily primarily speaks through his word but there are times he speaks through our circumstances. 
God allows our circumstances to get us to the posture or in the posture he needs for the times that we are in. And I strongly believe this COVID-19 crisis is being used by God in spite of its origins, uh, purposes and controversies. And at the end of it all, God will get the glory. How? I have no idea, but I know He will. Because He's sovereign and nothing comes to Him by surprise. And He controls all things. And He's all powerful and all knowing. Um, and when you actually think about it, um, because of the COVID-19 crisis, people are beginning to realize that they are not in control of their own lives. People are beginning to think about their mortality. People are beginning to think about their death. The thought of death is becoming a day-to-day -day thing. And I think that's important because it brings to surface the most important question you will ever ask yourself. And that is, where will I go when I die? Or where do people go when they die? And I believe that's a fair question because people die every day. And people will continue to die. In fact, the Bible gives us a direct promise in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. It says, it is appointed once for man to die, then the judgment. So that means death is inevitable and death will, co will come to us all. You know, the Bible calls death the king of terror. Death is like, death is like a police officer. You know, when a police officer arrests a criminal, he brings the criminal before the judge. And death works the same way. Death is the arresting officer that will bring us or drag us before the judge of the universe. You know, the Bible says that God has set a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. And each man shall give an account of himself to God for the things done in the body, whether good or evil. So after death is the judgment. Now, I don't know if you know this, but the Bible actually tells us what death is. The Bible calls death wages. W-A-G-E-S. Wages. Mshahara in Swahili. Romans chapter three, uh, 6 verse 23 says, The wages of sin is death. So because we've sinned, we earn death. Sin is so serious to God that he gives, it the, he gives sinners the death sentence. It's, it's, like, it's like a judge in a court of law who sentences a criminal to death for raping and viciously murdering three young girls. The criminal has earned the electric chair. That is what he deserves. It's his wages. Now, do we deserve death? Absolutely. A big resounding yes. Why? The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned and the Bible continues to say that every soul that sins shall die so by sinning we earn death death is the, is the just penalty that we receive it's the reward that we receive from God for sinning against him and breaking his laws God gives us the death sentence as our wages. Now, 
the Bible makes it very, very, very clear. It says, because we've sinned against God, His wrath abides upon us. And God is a just judge or a just God. And because He's good, He has to punish the criminal. Because God is the judge and you and I are criminals. And just like in a, in a normal um, um, court setup, a good judge will send the criminal or give the criminal what he deserves. And so God, because he's good, gives us what we deserve, which is death. And so you and I deserve a place called hell. Hell is God's prison. Because we violated his law. We've broken his law. We have lied, we have stolen, we have committed adultery, we have, um, you know, we have blasphemed his name. And the Bible says no liar, no blasphemer, no adulterer, no, no covetous person, no homosexual, no drunkard will inherit the kingdom of God. But that they have their place in the lake of fire. Now, I know that sounds harsh, very harsh, but that's the truth. And if you're not concerned about where you will spend eternity, this would be a good time to do so. Because I'm concerned about where you will spend your eternal life. And that's why I'm doing this video because I love you and I care enough to tell you that if you died in your sins you have God's promise you will end up in hell and I would hate for that to happen and it doesn't have to happen it doesn't have to be that way and that's why I'm bringing you the good news and the good news is God made a way for you and for me. God made a way out for us. And how did he do that? I'm glad you asked. Let me explain. You see, you and I broke God's law, the Ten Commandments, known as the moral law. And Jesus paid the fine in his life's blood. That's what happened when he died on the cross. He paid for our fine in full. And just before he died, he said, it is finished. In other words, the debt has been paid. The debt that you and I owed God was paid in full on the cross by Jesus. You see, if you're in court and someone pays your fine, the judge can legally let you go. Why? Because your fine has been paid by another, even though you're guilty. You can walk out free or you can freely walk out of the courtroom because justice has been satisfied. Now it is because Jesus paid the fine for sin in full on the cross that God can dismiss your case, commute your death sentence, allow you to legally live forever all because Jesus paid the fine for sin in full. See, Jesus paid the fine so you and I can be free from the penalty of death. And God has made the way 
for us to find some everlasting life. Very simple. There are two things that you have to do. And the first thing is repentance. What is repentance? Repentance means a change of mind. Repentance means turning away from the love of sin and turning to God for salvation. Repentance is more than, is, is more than just confession. Repentance is forsaking sin. You know, Jesus said, unless you repent, you will likewise perish. The Bible says in 2 Timothy, I believe, chapter 2, verse 19, it says, let him, let him who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Paul said, in the days of ignorance, God overlooked, but now he calls all men everywhere to repent. Listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, it says, God is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. That is how amazing God is. So the first thing you have to do is repent. You have, there has to be contrition. There has to be a deep conviction. There has to be godly sorrow. You have to moan over your sin. You have to acknowledge that you have sinned against God. It has nothing to do with your intellect. It has everything to do with your heart. The second thing you have to do is you have to put your trust in Jesus Christ to grant you everlasting life and Jesus Christ alone. You know, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life or the everlasting life so what he was saying he was making an exclusive statement saying no one else can offer you eternal life or everlasting life except me because I am that everlasting life itself you see the only one that can save you on the day of judgment is Jesus because he's the only one that paid your fine in full And what that means is, on the day of judgment, you can walk out of God's courtroom free. On the day of judgment. Because your name was found in the book of life. That you were set free. You were bought with a price. Your debt was paid because of Jesus. So what you have to do is put your trust in Jesus Christ the same way you put your trust in a doctor to operate your body or a parachute and, or a plane or a pilot to give you a safe landing. You put that trust in Jesus Christ to grant you everlasting life. And when you do that, he gives you a new heart. He makes you a new creation or a new creature. The old goes away. And he gives you a new heart and new desires. And you begin to love the things that God loves and hate the things that God hates. And your heart is transformed completely. And after you do that, pick up a Bible and make sure to read it daily and obey what it says. You see, Reading the Bible, you see, God, we, we, we talk to God through prayer. And God speaks to us through His Word. The only way for your faith to grow is to be in constant fellowship with the Word of God. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That's the only way you can have faith in God, by reading His Word. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So you have to read the Bible. So 
So that's it guys. I hope um, you think about what I've shared or what I've just said. Um, make sure to share the video and um, don't forget to subscribe to uh, my new YouTube channel. Um, click on the notification bell um, and I hope to see you on the next one. God bless you and take care. In Jesus' name, amen.